Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today this video is about Microsoft's Windows 11 Insider Preview Build, 25309, which is released to the dev channel, starting with this build, and talking about what's new in this build. Firstly we'll be having a new volume mixer experience in quick settings. Microsoft is introducing a new enhanced volume mixer into quick settings. The updated audio quick settings experience brings a modern volume mixer that allows for quick customization of audio on a per app basis, with additional control to swap devices on the fly. Also added a new keyboard shortcut, Win plus Control plus V, to bring you directly to the volume mixer for faster control of the experience. With this change, you can now tailor your audio experience better with more control and fewer clicks to better manage your favorite taps. In addition, also made it easier for users to enable their Windows Sonic experience with a quick access list of installed spatial sound technology. You can visit the Microsoft Store to find additional spatial sound technology to choose from such as Dolby and DTS. Moving forward, you'll have updated touch keyboard settings. After making some fixes, Microsoft is reintroducing the new touch keyboard setting, originally introduced with build 25188, and disabled with build 25217 that replaces the show the touch keyboard when there's no keyboard attached checkbox under touch keyboard, with a new drop-down menu with three options to control whether tapping an edit control should launch the touch keyboard, never suppresses the touch keyboard even when no hardware keyboard is attached. When no keyboard attached will show the touch keyboard only when the device is used as a tablet without the hardware keyboard. Always will show the touch keyboard even when the hardware keyboard is attached. Moving forward. Now insiders in the dev channel will be able to turn ACM on for their SDR displays, and have all colors across all Windows apps, whether or not they are color managed, appear accurately and consistently on every supported display. To turn ACM on, go to Settings, Display, Advanced Display, select the correct display and turn on automatically manage color for apps. Moving forward, Microsoft has completely renovated the in-app command help page in voice access to make it simpler to use and comprehend. The search bar allows users to quickly find commands and the different categories provide further guidance. Every command now has a description and examples of its variations, making it easier to understand and use. You can always switch to a different language by navigating to settings, language on the voice access bar. So, these were a few new features, introduced in this build. Now talking about changes and improvements made in this build. In general, starting with build 25290. Microsoft started a new exploration of badging on the start menu with two new treatments that some insiders in the dev channel will see. Starting today, Microsoft is trying out different text variants within these treatments. Next to that, Microsoft is also trying out a more personalized second chance out of box experience, Scoob, with a small subset of Windows insiders in the dev channel. Moving forward, for search on the taskbar, the search box on the taskbar will be lighter when Windows is set to a custom color mode. Specifically, when the Windows 11 mode is set to dark, and the app mode is set to light, you will see a lighter search box on the taskbar. For File Explorer, Windows insiders will begin noticing a pizza icon on the command bar in File Explorer. This icon denotes that an insider is previewing the Windows app SDK version of File Explorer. Functionality in File Explorer remains unchanged, it just switches from using WinUI 2 to using WinUI 3. For Snap Layouts, after pausing this with build 25300, Microsoft is unpausing this with this build. Microsoft is trying out different treatments for snap layouts with Windows insiders in the dev channel. Also investigating ways to improve the discoverability and usage of the snap layouts, such as decreasing the hover time required to invoke the flyout when you mouse over the maximum slash restore button in an app's title bar. In addition to a few other tweaks, you'll notice some treatments will also pull in the icon of the app window you're working in and adding a descriptive title. For Windows Spotlight, starting today, Microsoft is disabling the different treatments that have been been trying out for Windows Spotlight that began with build 25281. Due to an issue impacting the experience insiders will have on these treatments, Microsoft plans to reintroduce an updated Windows Spotlight experience for insiders in a future flight based on the feedback from insiders from using these different treatments. As part of disabling these treatments, insiders may need to re-enable Windows Spotlight from settings. For input, updated the simplified Chinese handwriting recognition engine to be faster, and more accurate as well as supported characters defined in GB18030222. Currently, you can write characters in GB18030222 level 2, and some of the characters in GB18030222 level 1, 
in the handwriting panel or directly into the text field when it's supported. For widgets, Microsoft is beginning to roll out theme-aware icons for widgets on the taskbar so that based on the user's Windows theme, dark or light, the widgets icons will display a theme-aware icon that will have a higher contrast ratio which will make information on the taskbar clearer for users, particularly for those with low sight. For settings app, settings, power and battery has been updated to include settings for choosing what happens when interacting with your PC's physical power controls. So, that was all about the changes and improvements made to this build. Moving forward, and talking about the fixes, in general, fixed an issue causing USB devices, including keyboard and mouse, to not work for some insiders after upgrading to build 25295 and later. Fixed an issue for some insiders where if you'd uninstalled the previous flight, it would cause your start menu and taskbar to cyclically crash. Fixed an issue where when using Windows Hello to sign in with facial recognition, it may not have worked on ARM64 PCs. Fixed an issue with the Windows Insider Program Settings page, showing a newer build was available in Windows Update even though you were on the latest available build in the dev channel. For taskbar and system tray, fixed multiple explorer.exe crashes impacting taskbar and system tray. Fixed a display issue that could result in the taskbar appearing duplicated when making resolution changes. Fixed an issue that was causing app icons on the taskbar to appear on the wrong monitor for some insiders with multiple monitors. For widgets, fixed an issue where under certain circumstances third-party widgets were not loading as expected. For search on the taskbar, fixed rendering issues when using the touch keyboard with the search box on the taskbar. Fixed an issue when double-clicking the search highlight glyph in the search box makes it disappear. Fixed an issue where the search box would randomly disappear. Fixed an issue where the search icon flips incorrectly for right to left, RTL, languages. Fixed an issue where you might have seen some text flicker in the search box when you click into it. Fixed an issue where the search box might disappear on one monitor if you are using multiple monitors. Made some accessibility fixes to the settings for search under settings, personalization, taskbar. For file explorer, Fixed an issue that caused insiders with custom desktop icon arrangements slash sizes to get set back to default in the previous build. Fixed an underlying issue believed to be the cause of File Explorer unexpectedly jumping into the foreground sometimes. The open in new tab context menu option and middle clicking folders will now open the tab in the background rather than switching focus. Fixed an issue where the close button could get stuck in a highlighted state when you moved your mouse across it. For input. Fix an issue where when using the French-Canadian layout for the touch keyboard, the letter's output when typing didn't always match what was displayed on the keys. When using the Korean IME, Ctrl plus F10 should no longer open the IME context menu. For settings app, fixed an underlying issue believed to be the root cause of why some insiders saw their startup app settings get reset with the previous build. Going to privacy and security, phone calls should no longer crash settings. For windowing, fixed a high-hitting DWM.exe crash in the last couple flights. Lastly, talking about other fixes, fixed multiple issues that were preventing some of the new Live Captions language models from downloading correctly. Fixed an underlying issue causing insiders on ARM64 PCs to not be able to activate M365, with it citing a network issue. Fixed a search indexer crash. Fixed an underlying issue that could cause UWP apps to appear in English after upgrading although that wasn't your display language. Fixed an issue that was causing up installer packages to fail to install with an error message that says the parameter is incorrect, even though it wasn't. Fixed an underlying issue causing certain cameras to not work in apps with the last flight. Fixed an underlying issue that was leading to Microsoft Edge crashes for some insiders in the last few flights. So, that was all from Microsoft for this build. If you want to know more, follow the link to the official Microsoft blog, from the description. Hope it was useful. Consider like for the video. Subscribe to the channel, and if you have any questions, just comment down below. Thanks for watching, and have a great day ahead.